Hey guys, welcome to Boxing Squared for boxing news and views from around the internet. So I just wanted to pick up again the quandary the WBA faces in trying to satisfy multiple parties in relation to its super champion belt. That's of course the one that Anthony Joshua holds after winning it in April against Vladimir Klitschko. It had been vacant until that point. As we know, Team Joshua has been ordered to make a fight with the WBA mandatory Luis Ortiz and also IBF mandatory Kubat Pulev. And the clock is winding down on that, less than two weeks to go now. So something's got to give, right? At the end of this video, I'll give an alternative narrative, which I think could be at play here. But first, um, there were two articles that I read online, and that highlighted some of the thorny issues which the WBA is grappling with. And there's sort of alternative ends of the spectrum here, unrelated things, but kind of connected. And uh, from some of the vibes that the WBA is giving off uh, in one of these articles, you know, it probably explains why Eddie Hearn is so confident that Joshua will make his first defense of the belt against his IBF mandatory, Kubrat Pulev, in a few months. Okay, the first article that I read, and actually you've probably seen this all over the place actually, in various forms. So, Vladimir Klitschko. He is on record as saying he could have made $20 million from a rematch with Joshua. So if that's the case, the purse would have been the thick end of about $40 million or so. So round out the promotion costs and all the revenue streams, and we are talking a massive, massive amount of money. Given the WBA as a sanctioning body clips the ticket on the way through, Joshua being its champion, it makes a lot of dollars and cents in terms of money for them. You see what I did there? And by extension, it's free promotion for them too. Having a popular heavyweight champ extends Joshua's glow to the WBA. Let's face it, everyone loves a winner. And right now, AJ is in that period of his career. And remember, Mike Tyson and others, they've been through this, where they were like Midas. Everything that, that you know, he's been involved in is turning to gold. Those involved in his career, including himself, they are making a huge amount of money. And they won't want that gravy train to end. For the WBA, it's a two-way street in that respect. The carrot it dangles Joshua's way, and Team Joshua's way, is a very sought-after belt. So for Joshua, more belts, more prestige, bring in more casual fans, more on the line. So the second but very different type of article was a brief piece posted on fightnews.com. I'd seen it a few days ago, but the Klitschko comments, you know, when sort of paired with this brief piece, just made it clear to me how difficult a choice slash decision the WBA really has to make. Because this fightnews.com piece is so brief, I'll quote it in its entirety. Gilberto Jesus Mendoza, president of the World Boxing Association, today reiterated the WBA's heavyweight resolution for the mandatory fight between Anthony Joshua and Luis Ortiz. With Joshua having mandatories due for two separate organizations, Mendoza added that he is in conversation with the International Boxing Federation for the mandatory fights to take place without affecting the boxers. In addition, he repeated the WBA will continue eliminating titles to arrive at a single champion. There's two things that I found very, very interesting about that little story from fightnews.com and things that are also problematic for the WBA in its current stance. So we have Luis Ortiz, the mandatory challenger. He's threatening to take court action if he doesn't get his shot next. The WBA clearly says... It's trying to cut a deal with the IBF without affecting the boxes. So that indicates to me the WBA will crawl over broken glass to keep Joshua as its champion. So if Eddie Hearn has already said 30,000 times that Pulev is next, his IBF mandatory, no matter what, well what sort of chance does Luis Ortiz stand being next and what chance does Joshua stand of being stripped? Especially given what Mendoza is saying. After all, let's not forget, these sanctioning bodies are a law unto themselves. It seems clear, Ortiz is adamant he won't step aside and wait. On the face of it, and from what his team was saying publicly, it would appear, you know, a potential legal case, you know, 
that might have legs and they might have a really good case in court. So second thing there, I found concerning what the WBA said about its recommitment to bringing its multiple belts down to one. So I covered that exact topic about a month or so ago, so feel free to check back through my videos to watch that one for a bit more context. So my beef here, the WBA since it announced almost two years ago, yes almost two years ago that it wanted to get its super champion, regular champion, interim champion, ice cream champion, holds a belt on every second Tuesday champion down to one belt. It hasn't made a jot of progress on this front. Which I covered off in my previous video. I think I already mentioned that. But anyway, besides trying to cut down all these belts that it's got down to one, it already has the added aggravation of Freza Quindo. So they've got to satisfy him in giving him a title shot. And that's because of court action he took. So given all that, how is the WBA going to cut down to one belt and take into account all the machinations associated with the tr that tricky situation, let alone do that at the same time, it's got this Joshua belt situation to sort out. I mean, I say let's sort one problem at a time. Might be time to pause that belt simplification ambition, because sim let's face it, they are running on the treadmill and going nowhere with it. And consider this. Wouldn't it theoretically tie up some of the time of the super champion, and that's what Joshua is at the moment, so if that is the case, who wants to see a potential fight of Joshua Frezaquindo or Frezaquindo Luis Ortiz? No one. No one. That's who. So recap, the WBA is fighting this Joshua belt situation on multiple fronts. Despite what it says someone will be cut out of the picture. And my pick is, it won't be Joshua. But then consider this. Luis Ortiz, I actually think he's probably boxing really smart inside and outside of the ring on this one. He knows he has a great case. If it goes to court, he would probably win. So I actually think he's probably setting up for two paydays. Despite what all these boxers say, at the end of the day, this is a business for them as well. They've got life after boxing to think about. What massive paydays has Luis Ortiz had? None. I'm sure he's getting by just fine. But he hasn't had these life-changing paydays that, say, a Joshua fight would bring. So ultimately, with this leverage that he has, with the potential court threats he may be able to get a very decent step aside fee they may be able to negotiate something and then he still gets joshua next anyway and what would he get from that five million ten million who knows joshua is blowing up and getting bigger every single fight while we have this luis ortiz and potential deontay wilder fight off to the other side if luis ortiz is thinking about his career and bear in mind he's 38 He's not going to get any younger or any better. And if he loses, then that's probably him. He's probably not going to come back for that to get a massive payday from anyone else. And let's face it, the Ortiz Wilder payday would be, what, a quarter of a third of what it would be for a Joshua fight? So I think he's probably being very smart over this thing. And he will probably, I mean, despite what they say, I mean, it's it could be all bluster, it could be all, they're putting up a good front, but really, they're just managing his career in a smart way to get the best financial result. After all, boxing is a business. Despite what us fans want to see as the big fights, often money trumps that. So it wouldn't surprise me if Luis Ortiz does end up rolling over in the next couple of weeks. He'll wait, get a shot next, get paid in the interim, and Bob's your uncle. We'll have to see. Okay, that's it from me. Hit like and subscribe. I'm out.